All right, today I am at Bristol, Rhode Island, and I'm at Nacho Mama's. I'm gonna try their five pound burrito challenge. Uh, it's got chicken in it and uh, guacamole, beans, rice, all the typical burrito fillings, and I got 30 minutes, so I'm gonna give it my best. Hi, welcome to another episode of Eating Cereal. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these episodes, but happy you're tuning in for this one. If you're going to watch me stuff my face for 10 minutes, I want you to learn something from the experience. So I recently participated in the MS150 bike ride in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. This is a fundraising event that helps raise money for multiple sclerosis or MS research. And one of the most important things this event and other events like this do is raise awareness of the disease. Now, as a showing of support to those who donated, I want to educate you on this disease that we are fighting. So let's get started. Let's start with the name, multiple sclerosis. Where does that come from? Well, multiple, of course, means several or many. And sclerosis comes from the Greek word scleros, which means hard or solid. When you have MS, hard areas called plaques develop along your neurons, specifically on the axons of the neurons. And this is happening in multiple areas of the nervous system, including the brain and the spine. So let's look at what happens in these axons in someone with MS. The axons of the neurons are covered in something called myelin. Myelin is a protective fluid that allows these neurons to transfer signals in a protected setting through the axon without being interrupted by outside influences. In someone with MS, this myelin is attacked by your own immune system. This is similar to celiac disease, which I describe in a much earlier eating cereal video. Why does the immune system attack the myelin? Well, that's not really clear. Some have hypothesized that it can be due to an infection of some type, or there can be genetic causes at work. Without this myelin, scar tissue is left behind on these axons. The scar tissue is also called a plaque or a sclera. When the scars develop on the axons, communications between neurons are interrupted. These attacks often happen in waves, meaning the patient can have spells of issues in between long periods of feeling pretty much okay. In most cases, if the disease is still new, the myelin can fully regenerate and be almost like new within a few days or a few weeks, and the patient will go back to feeling normal until the next attack or spell. And unfortunately, this disease is usually progressive. And eventually, the oligodendrocyte cells that produce the myelin die off. So while the patient gets better from a particular attack of the disease, they don't come back as strong as they were before the attack, and the next attack will likely be worse, and the patient will come back from that attack, but not as strong as before. So it's progressive. So what exactly happens during these attacks? Pretty much anything that involves the nervous system being out of whack is an indication that an attack may be occurring in someone with the disease. And they usually depend on what part of the brain or the spinal column is under attack. So here's a list of some of the issues you can have during an MS attack. You can have balance, coordination, and dizziness issues, also called ataxia. You get tired easily, so fatigue, lack of energy, reduced vision effectiveness, uh, so blurred vision, uh, just general bad vision problems, urinary incontinence, also known as pissing your pants, weakness in the limbs, prickly pain in your extremities, sort of a pins and needles feeling, reduction in mobility, trouble concentrating or remembering things, and generally loss of coordination. So in addition to being a disease that has attacks or spells, as you might call it, 
some people it's purely a progressive disease. So uh, what I mean by that is it can just get started and then get progressively worse and you don't really come back at all. It just, uh, it just slowly gets worse and worse. So what are the long-term effects and symptoms of MS? Well, just think of all the symptoms I mentioned before and imagine each of them getting worse and worse and imagine the worst type of embodiment of each of those and that's kind of what you're looking at for the long term. So for fatigue and getting tired easily, think of complete lack of energy to the point of near paralysis. Reduced vision effectiveness can ultimately cause blindness if you think about that getting to its worst possible state. Urinary incontinence, uh, well, eventually you'll have to be catheterized. And then uh, weakness in the limbs can ultimately lead to paralysis. Uh, prickly pain and pins and needles feeling can ultimately bring on a feeling of uh, extreme discomfort, extreme pain, uh, pain so bad that you want to die from it. Reduction in mobility, uh, that gets to its worst possible embodiment, you will be facing paralysis. Trouble concentrating or remembering things, you become somewhat senile in this type of a situation. Loss of balance, loss of coordination, that can lead to paralysis as well. So is multiple sclerosis a deadly disease? The answer is yes, but it's not necessarily in the same way as things like cancer or plague infection, but it can make you not want to live anymore because of all the pain and suffering it causes. So everybody dies at some point, and while a lot of people with MS might die of a different cause, this other cause may have been made much more treatable in a person who does not have the disease. So what are some of the treatments available at this point? Well, there is no cure at this point, which is an important point to make. The best medications we have today just sort of keep the disease at bay and slow down its progression. Several medications can make the attacks occur less frequently. Another option is called plasmapheresis. This is where you filter the blood to remove the antibodies that destroy the myelin. You can also take immunosuppressors, which reduce the activity of the immune system. This could be dangerous if you're fighting off an infection of a different kind, though. So what can normal folks like you or me do? The most important thing is to spread awareness and good information about this disease. If you know someone who has the disease, ask them about it, if they're willing to talk about it. Tell them to describe what their life is like dealing with it and help spread that information so that people can understand how awful this disease is. And the National MS Society is a great resource of information and a great champion of fighting the disease. I have a great time meeting folks through the organization, and next year I'm going to try to get a team together and a whole team of riders, and we're going to do the riding event, the bicycling event, next year. So that will be a great time. So that will do it for this episode. Now let's finish off this burrito. All right, that was a nice burrito challenge. Very spicy. That was that was the one thing that made it very difficult, but uh, got it done. This is the second food challenge I've beaten in Rhode Island, and now I'm gonna head to Ohio for the week for a business trip, and then. See you next time.